Hey, this is Andreas from Pocketables.com. Now that the iOS 6.1 jailbreak is out, I thought I would do a video where I show you the tweaks I have installed on my iPad mini. Uh, it's been three months since I uh, switched to an iPad mini and have been without jailbreak for that long. So it's really nice to be back and I'm finally been able to get all the tweaks I want working. So let me just start off because I have a lot of different tweaks to go through so I'll just go through them quickly and then give you a list in written format so you can check out more yourself. Um, first off, uh, the, 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 the app I'm using to actually record this video is called Display Recorder and that is in itself a jailbreak tweak because uh, you, you do need to be jailbroken to record the display directly like this unless you do it via AirPlay or something like that. Um, display Recorder is quite nice because it allows you to record the audio from the internal microphone or a connected microphone. Uh, it records the screen and you can also use it to overlay this indicator to show where I'm touching the screen, which is actually an issue when you're recording um, without a jailbreak through HDMI or something like that, is that you don't see where the person is touching the screen. Uh, and you could actually use this also to just overlay the touch indicator and still use other methods to display or record a screen. Um, swiping over to the search bar, um, you can see my keyboard, which is black. Uh, the tweak I'm using to get that is called Black Keyboard. Uh, it is iOS 6.1 compatible, even though it says it's not compatible with iOS 5 in the description. Apparently, that doesn't mean it's not a available at for iOS 6. Uh, this basically brings uh, uh, or allows you to use the hidden black keyboard that's on your iPad uh, in other places than on the lock screen which is where it's normally used. Um, I would have preferred to use Color Keyboard HD which is the app I used to use for uh, um, switching the color on my keyboard however that hasn't been updated to iOS 6 yet so uh, this basically just does the same thing uh, at least if you don't want a pink keyboard or anything like that and you have an iPad um, so yeah that's black keyboard uh, if I pull down my notification center you can see my toggles which is part which are part of SP settings SP settings is one of the two most popular um, apps to give you toggles in the notification center um, I use this over NC settings which is the other option because it allows me to display my local IP and free RAM and everything like that uh, and also there are some other tweaks that use this to display their own toggles um, so I just use this to quickly access brightness and things like that it's much easier than going into settings or even going into the multitasking feature. When you install SP settings, you also get something called Activator, which can be installed individually if you want to. Activator is an app that allows you to configure different um, touch gestures, button presses, uh, various different uh, basically ways of interacting with this um, device and get those things to do other things than they would normally do. Uh, if that made no sense at all, you can configure different actions that would allow you to uh, start or open apps or uh, different tweaks so you can have a sliding in gesture to open SP settings or anything like that. Uh, the only thing I actually use it for is to give me uh, an alternative to using the power button to turn off my display. So I have configured to just hold down on the status bar and it turns off my display. And that neatly brings me into turning back on my display and show you this. Uh, this tap to unlock thing instead of the, the slide to unlock. This is part of Android Lock XT, uh, which is a very nice app. It's one of my favorite jailbreak tweaks. Uh, it doesn't just give you the tap to unlock feature, it also allows you to automatically unlock your device when you're connected to a Wi-Fi network, which is why I was not prompted with any sort of code or anything like that when I unlock my screen. And the reason it's called Android Lock XT is because it, when the security system is enabled, it prompts you for a unlock pattern instead of a pin code or anything like that. So uh, the Android pattern unlock is something I think is much better than just 
inputting a code so I like to have it and then you have the Wi-Fi unlock feature on top of that um, okay so next up let's look at ad blocker you might have seen that toggle in my SP settings that's one of those uh, third-party tweaks that uses SP settings if I go into uh, Safari load up a Norwegian newspaper which has a ton of ads you can actually see that there are no ads in this particular case except this one which sort of got through the filter um, but basically it filters out ads wherever it can detect them much like any ad blocker on a browser um, it's really useful because there are some websites out there that are not that good at uh, deciding where to put ads and because you have limited the screen real estate on an, even an iPad it's always nice to be able to get rid of the ads um, and while I'm in Safari anyways uh, I have another Safari tweak that's uh, installed called full screen for iPad uh, I moved that from swipe Safari which does or did the same thing but it hasn't been updated yet uh, it allows you to have different gestures to control Safari. The only one of which I use is a three finger tap to enable full screen mode, which just makes a Safari so much easier to use um, because you only get more screen real estate. And if you saw, I someone managed to remove the entire Safari right here. This is a tweak called Sephir. Uh, it uh, essentially gives you multitasking gestures uh, that's sort of similar to the ones you have on the iPad already but in my opinion they're better so the four main ones is that you can close an app like this um, or you can sort of stop halfway up and open the multitasking switcher or you can swipe in from outside the uh, frame of the iPad in order to switch apps, assuming I actually have any apps to switch to. Um, so instead of using five fingers, you basically use one finger uh, and you basically just drag from the edge, from outside the edge of the display. So if you do get any apps where this interferes with the normal operation, for instance, uh, Site, which is a newsreader, uh, you swipe pages, and uh, I very often start it too far out and start switching apps instead. You can actually go in and disable this on a per app basis, so it shouldn't be a problem. And it's just so it makes so much sense to just start from below below the um, edge of the iPad and just drag up to um, to get rid of the app. Uh, I've only had this on for a couple of days and it's already become such a natural thing to do to get rid of the apps. Um, next up, let me switch on something on my side, and there you go. So this is BTC mouse and trackpad. This is the newest way of getting a mouse working on your iPad. Um, it, use, it allows you to use a Bluetooth mouse and just connect it like you would through the normal Bluetooth settings, uh, unlike some tweaks that were more popular a few years ago where you had to actually use a different Bluetooth stack, basically a different Bluetooth driver to get a mouse working. Uh, BTC mouse and keyboard is much easier because you just um, just uh, connect it through the normal Bluetooth method and it will reconnect automatically and everything like that. Uh, it also has a presentation mode which you can enable where the two mouse buttons uh, start emulating swipes to the left and right, which is useful in apps like Keynote because it essentially allows you to control your um, um, control your uh, presentation using the mouse buttons. So that's BTC mouse and trackpad. Um, another app is ProTube, which is sort of uses the existing YouTube app. Uh, and basically gives it more features in form of a new app. Um, you have options such as um, downloading video, uh, or downloading audio, um, and you can also tweak the quality of the video, which is something you lose on most mobile devices, um, and a ton of different other YouTube-related 
tweaks, which is really nice. Um, as far as downloading video and audio goes, it also um, works with another app from the same developer called Bridge. Bridge is, uh, well, like the name somehow su somewhat suggests, it bridges um, your iTunes library on your device with the rest of your device so that if you download audio or video, uh, you don't need to use separate apps to open those files and then go through iTunes to add them to the actual library. You can actually add any song or video directly to the media library on your device, which is what it says right here. So you could essentially manage your entire music collection without ever having to use iTunes, which is something that I think a lot of people would be very interested in. Um, getting to the end here, but uh, let's look at uh, this app right here, which has nothing to do with jailbreak per se, but this is actually a uh, an iPhone app, and if you run an iPhone app um, on an iPad before, you know that it runs in basically iPhone 3G mode, um, which is uh, 320 by 480 pixels, uh, but there is a jailbreak tweak called Retina Pad, which enables these apps to run in their iPhone 4 4S resolution, which is four times as much. So it's on the side right now, but you can see that even though this is an iPhone app, it's much, much clearer than it, a normal iPhone app would have been. Uh, I also enabled the tweak to disable the... Um, um, the zoom button which you would normally have down here so it always runs in full screen mode always runs in four times the resolution um, the final app I'm using is iFile iFile is one of those uh, jailbreak tweaks that everyone has uh, built into their device it's just um, um, uh, it's a file browser that allows you to access the uh, the file system that's hidden underneath iOS. Uh, this is useful for a lot of things. There are some fixes and things like that that somehow uh, sometimes require you to use the file system. Uh, it's also useful for finding uh, any data that belongs to an app. Or in this case, it's browsing the display recorder directory, which means that uh, it accesses the files I have recorded using display recorder. Um, and if you have a USB adapter, normally meant for a camera, uh, there is a tweak that allows you to enable full access to a USB drive. Uh, and then you could use iFile to actually transfer files on and off a flash drive, not just photos and videos like you would on a non-jailbreaking device, jailbreaking device, but any sort of file. So that's one of those uh, very common must-have apps for breaking your iPad. So those are the tweaks I currently have installed. Uh, I skipped some that I had installed on my old iPad 2 and added some new ones but essentially the result is uh, just a lot of... it varies from tools that are really crucial, crucial to me like display recorder and Bluetooth mouse to things that are more about convenience like uh, automatic Wi-Fi unlock of the screen and uh, Sephir's multitasking gestures. So um, hopefully this has been useful to see what you can do with a jailbroken iPad mini and um, thank you for watching.